Your dad's Hasidic and uh, your mom is a, is a hippie. You grow up in that environment. It sounds like a sitcom. Well, yeah, it was hilarious. It was very funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I grew up in Oakland, California. That's where I'm from. Bra, 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 bra. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, got an applause break. Sure, yeah, the people violence love that. Of my home community. People love a like, drive-by. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I grew up in. It used to that sound effect makes less sense with each passing year because of the effects of gentrification. Like right. now, it's it's not really. It's more like I grew up in Oakland. <laughs> Latte. <laughs> The sounds have changed. Yeah. yeah, but I grew up in Oakland, and then my dad was in was in Brooklyn. Actually, well, one thing that's interesting when I was on the show before promoting my book, Cashier mm -hmm. in the Rye, um, there, <laughs> some people are laughing because there's a similarly titled book. Is that right? <laughs> it's a weird coincidence. I found you out didn't about know that. it. That's yeah, embarrassing. No. Yeah, that's it was embarrassing. embarrassing. I found out after I wrote my book. I checked it out. It's called Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> <laughs> Gave it a read. Yeah? Not, not a fan. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a banger though. You should definitely check it out. <laughs> 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 But uh, yeah, my dad was a, was a Hasidic Jew. He got very religious as we got older. And uh, my, it was a very weird bifurcated experience because my dad was extremely religious and my mom was like very open, atheist, like very like into like, like sex and sexuality, like very porous, like we never slept together, but like uh, <laughs> when, when I got to masturbation age, I guess, I, like at that age that my mother started to think like, oh, he's getting, the hormones yeah. are starting yeah, yeah, to yeah. kick in. She brought me with her to like a, one of these feminist uh, vibrator, like feminist sex, do you know what I'm talking about? Does sure. anyone yes. know what I'm talking about? I know about? exactly. I, I think yeah. your discomfort, but I lived through this. Yeah. My mother took me on a field trip to the vibrator store to buy me a lesbian lesbian text-based erotica to help you with your self-pleasuring yeah but my question is okay she went to a vibrator how did she even know where the vibrator store was what do you mean how did she know I mean she definitely was an, a, a loyal loyal customer she had a punch oh, card oh, she would go yeah she had a punch card she had a, but it was kind of shaky a little bit <laughs> i wish it was just for my pornography uh -huh. i wish because the truth is she was she was very sexually open and stuff and she she would always buy accoutrement for her hitachi magic wand vibrator my mother's deaf by the way you remember that my mom's deaf yeah i do remember the that. hitachi magic wand do i need to mention to you that it is the loudest vibrator <laughs> available on the market and that my mother has no concept uh, uh, no connection to the concept of sound whatsoever this was was my childhood, That's guys. That's you grew up. <laughs> so you've got gut going on. Mom's got the Hitachi in the other room. There's all kinds of noise. And then dad, Hasidic. 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 Very good. And um, he, what is that experience like when you go and you live with dad? So when I go to dad, you know, that's a much less sexually open environment. Uh, but I was already, I had already flowered as a young lady. And so <laughs> I started doing this thing where you, I, we didn't have the internet. So I started like calling these phone sex lines. So I was very young. You remember? You were like, calling phone sex lines from your dad's house. Yeah. I'm not proud of it at all. But I got to the age where it was like bar mitzvah age and I started to come alive. And, and so I started calling these numbers. But they had this workaround where you, you know, the parents blocked all the 900 numbers. So they made this workaround where you would call these long distance phone numbers and someone in some far off exotic location would answer. And what the best call I ever made, uh, I called a number and the woman picked up. She's like, hello, or what? I, I only what, do, I don't do voices very well. So, what, what, what country do you think she was from? I'm gonna say probably like the Bora Bora, maybe. Yeah. I, I would say. <laughs> very, very expensive, by yeah. the way. And she, I, I called her and I was like, uh, hello, I'm, uh, hello, I'm a grown up man. I'm not 13. I'd like to have sex on the phone with you, please. Mm. And she was like, oh no, sorry, I don't do that kind of call. I, she doesn't do that kind of call. I mean, there's only one. So why did they connect you to her if she doesn't do that kind of call? I don't know what happened if there was a weird, I don't know, I have no idea. I, I, there was only one logical thing to do, which was as an embarrassed kid, hang up the phone, move on to a new something else. I decided to push the issue for some reason. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, please. I, I already paid the connection fee, please. And she's like, no. And I'm like, please. And she's like, no. And I'm like, please. And she's like, oh, all right. <laughs> We had phone sex that night. Conan, I still don't know what happened that night. Did I, did I pull a woman out of retirement for one last moan? <laughs> or even more compelling an idea, did I call a random wrong number in the Philippines and some saint of a woman could hear the, the pain in my voice, the two deaf parents, the Hasidic dad, the deaf mom just thought, you know what? This kid needs it. Go ahead and puck me, kid. Puck away. <laughs>